Ah, now then, crew, and welcome back to the Andy Mechanic YouTube channel. It's been almost four weeks since I last uploaded the video, so first of all, my sincere apologies about that. I've been very much looking forward to this particular video and getting this Myford lathe fully stripped so we can find out what other bits and pieces we need to order. Now, in the previous videos, we've gone as far as this. We've still got the apron, the carriage, and somewhere around it is the end stock as well. So we've got to dig that out and get that stripped. And then Mrs. Mechanic can get the whole thing cleaned up whilst the new parts are on the way. And they're taking about three to four weeks to get here from the UK. But that's okay. Plenty of other stuff to do. So we, you know, we just crack on. So what should we do today? Well, before we start, a huge thank you to Tang Tools as always. I was discussing with Brandon, their sales manager, about the MyFed 7, the ML7 project, and the fact that everything appears to be imperial. Obviously, it's from, when is it, 1954 this lathe was made. So of course, the metric system hadn't been adopted in the UK at that point. He says, look, don't panic, let's give you some tools so you can do the job. I do have some old Imperial bits and pieces, but they're in a shed buried somewhere. So he gave me a socket set. Cheers, Brendan. And a very cool set of combi spanners. And not only that, a nice set of Allen keys to go with it as well. So we've got everything we need now to finish the full strip without damaging any of the fasteners. Right, let's crack on. Here we go. <laughs> Use. Let's drop onto the MyFord website again. That's myford.co.uk. Not a sponsor to the channel, by the way. Uh, MyFord ML7. Crack on. There we go. And let's find the carriage. There we go. Perfect. Let's click on there. And that's the diagram. Click again. And here we go. This is what we've got. This is the diagram. Actually a better diagram that's in the actual printed manual. It's a lot easier to see what's going on. It's easier to film as well. So we've got the tool post. We've got this swivelly bit here, look, which is held on with two bolts. So let's get that bit removed first and then we'll focus on the actual carriage itself. That nut looks really butchered. This is the 11 16 spanner. Doesn't quite fit. Three quarter, that's probably what it started life out as, is a little bit on the loose side, but luckily it's not too tight. In fact, finger tight. Okay, let's get all these bits whipped off. Let's not lose the spring. Jesus, poor little lathe has been sat in my workshop for months waiting for this last video to be done. Okay, stick all those on the bench. Mr. Spring. Okay, we now have Jeez, we've got the swivel, but we could probably get that bit off the swivel because obviously it goes forwards and backwards. Uh, that's the whole idea, but you can see there's a lot of movement on that. Now there are some adjusters, in fact that one there has lost its little lock nut by the looks of it. So it probably could be adjusted, in fact that adjuster there is completely missing, there should be four. But we can get that taken off hopefully. We've got some screws on the end there as well, and we need to get the little handle taken off. God, look at that, even that's come loose. I looked at the diagram, it's always helpful. We've got to take the handle off first, and there appears to be a couple of flats on the actual drive shaft itself. So, if we pop that spanner, too big, that was a uh, three quarters, wrong size, five eighths, is that gonna fit? Ooh, even that's too big, hang on. Let's go down one. Nine sixteenths. Oh, that'll work. Right, here goes. Oh, perfect. Right, so that should just pop out of there now, hopefully. Cool. Right, another part gone. Okay, what do you reckon? 
and I reckon probably a three sixteenths. But realistically, no idea. Nope, too big. Let's go down one. Five thirty tooths. Oh, that works. Okay. Dum -de dum dum dum. I love taking all stuff apart. Actually, really looking forward to getting this lathe back together again at some point. Hopefully before I actually forget how the whole thing goes to. I'll have to rewatch the videos, won't I? That'd be cool. Because it has been a while. In fact, it sat in the workshop for about six months before I even made a start on this project. Right, that's one. Two. Okay, right, bits are falling off. So, is that going to pull out of there? No, oh, that's going to pull off there. Though. Way! Look at that! Fantastic! And the little slidey spacery adjuster plate. Excellent. Good job. What's next? Okay, well, I think we need to undo these. Same size? No, they're bigger. Right, let's go for that 316 and see if that's going to work. Oh, yes. Looks pretty good. Let's give it a go. Excellent. Dum, 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 dum. There we go. They were pretty loose. Okay. Jeez, there wasn't much thread down there. Okay, that's that one. And now that one. Right, that should maybe come off now. Yes. Okay, so it pivots on a central pivot. And looks like there's a bit of cardboard stuck down the end. What's going on there? Let's get a little scriber and see what's uh, what that's all about. I hadn't noticed this before. Interesting. What is that? Oh, geez. I have no idea what that is. Doesn't look of anything of this planet. Something alien. Right, so how does that... Oh, there we are. Look, that the screws out of there. Excellent. Feels pretty good, actually. So I'll whip that out of there, and then there's like a little plate to take off the end. Fast as you can, Andy. You're on camera. There we go. Okay, so a little plate to take off the end. We can do that next. I'll go and find a screwdriver. Okay, we're going in. I have no idea what that stuff is. Looks very weird. Okay, any ideas? Put it in the comments. Right, so that was pretty loose. That was pretty loose. One. 1954 this thing was put together and it probably has never been taken apart since this is quite a historic moment so that bit has the threads in it excellent bit of swarf down there by the looks of it yes it's just swarf okay cool right well that's fully stripped that's ready for mrs mechanic to clean that bit up now okay we'll leave those on there for now don't lose those screws. Now, this bit, how are we going to get the dial off? Oh, there we go, look. So the actual handle bit acts as a lock nut against this. Jeez, I need some... Let me get a rag. Go. Okay, I'm back. Okay, there we go. That's better, a bit more of a purchase. in the ends. Still spit right. Okay, we're off to the aluminium jawed vice. There we go. Much better. Look at that. It's a bit tight on the threads, but hey, that's all good. It's coming off. That's all that matters, isn't it? Good job, little lathe. Wow. Can be super careful. There we go. It is done. The wheel is off. What a nice piece of kit that is. Cast. 
Yeah, see little casting marks down there, look. Hmm. Right. Stick that over there. Now we can get rid of this. And there's a washer goes here, a little thrust washer. And it looks like there's a bush. Oh, another one, another washer there. A bush in there, maybe. A bush. Where's my rag? Might just be grease, actually. No, no bush. Straight into the casting. Now, just before we move on, I want to take a closer look at this slide. And you can see this bit is the adjuster. Basically, these little adjustment bolts here. You can apply more or less pressure to this plate and take up any kind of play on the slider so it's not wobbling around. It's all nice and accurate like it should be. And the slider looks to be in pretty good nick, the little insert. So we'll put that on the on the pile of bits. But I need to remove each of these screws, or in fact the ones that are remaining. You can see here, look, one's completely missing. This one's lost its lock nut, and these two are looking pretty rough too. So I maybe maybe order four new ones of those. So Andy, when you're watching this video, when you're editing up, make a list. We need some more of these. Honestly, making videos is so easy. It's great. Ah, right, that's two. That's a three eighths. That doesn't work. What have we got here? Five sixteenths. Jeez, that's that's a bit tight. That is just too small. Okay, yeah, that's not going to go on. So some weird size. So let's try this. This is this is an imperial monkey wrench, so we're all good. We'll stick that on there, or adjustable spanner, or adjustable wrench. If you're American. Jeez, okay, that's that one undone. Let's try this one. Got it, okay. Right, flat screwdriver again required. So we'll get these buzzed out, hopefully. There we go. Nice, this thre the threads are actually in good nick. But I say we'll get four new ones of these and four new lock nuts. There we go, perfect. Now, problem child, looks like it's been damaged this one. Probably some flying debris. Oh, it's loose. Excellent. Probably some flying debris. There we go. And notice they're not they're not regular bolts. They've got this flat and this domed end on there, which then snugs into that plate to give it purchase. Yeah. There's a lot of thought going into making these little lathes, isn't there? Right, well, I think other than the actual perch bolt, which probably could just stay in actually. No idea how the hell to get that out. Looks like it's been peened over at some point and then replaced. I don't know. Should we give it a... Oh, look, 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 look. Got evil eye. There's some little tiny screws hiding under there. Let's get a wire brush. We'll get that cleaned off and we'll see if we can get those undone. Who knows? Hopefully they're clean. Smallest wire brush I have. <gasps> right. Going to need something pretty small. Right, let's give this a go. Oh, it's loose. <laughs> right. Ooh, that's one. And again, grub screw with a little pointy bit on the end. Very good. Don't lose that one. Oh, loose again. Oh, nearly. Right, that's two out of three. One more to go. Is it gonna be three out of three? Who knows? Oh, this one's a bit peened over. It's pushed down a bit harder. It is turning. It is. Oh, look at that. Fantastic. That's great news. They could have been a real problem, actually. And that one there, somehow it's you've got some debris stuck in the, in the little flat. Maybe I'll give it a clean out. Right. Is that going to come out? I don't know. Should we give it a bang on the bench? Are you ready? OK, one, two, three. Bloody good. 
done. So that's how that comes out. Oh, and it has a little locating pin as well. Something else to lose. Look, it fits in there. And there is some damage. You see down there, look, this, this area here around those threads has been broken away. But these two are still good, and they were all threaded in, and it's not the, all the threads that are damaged, so I think we'll be all right. After all, it's a very old lathe. Woohoo! We're cooking on gas today, we really are. So that's the top bit off. Next job is this next sort of next carriage part, the one that goes across the bed. And I reckon it's going to be exactly the same process. We've got another, another wheel here, look, to remove, and then we can undo this bit here, which will be allow us to pull that, uh, that, that drive, that, that threaded rod out. And then, hopefully, we can slide it off the mechanism. Before we do that, let's check the diagram. Right, said Fred. Okay, so all of this bit now has been removed, and what what's remaining is this slide here with that twizzly knob, the dial, uh, the sort of the, the, the female thread, the captive thread here, and of course the threaded rod. So it does look exactly the same. So let's get that handle taken off, the dial taken off, and then we can undo these two. Uh, Allen keys here and withdraw that thread from the mechanism. Wow, it's all looking pretty good. Before we take it off, let's just check the amount of play there is. So I'm holding the carriage, this slidey bit at least, if you call that, call it that, holding it dead still, and I'm just going to turn the handle. So there's over 180 degrees of slack on that mechanism. So all that will need to be adjusted up when we put it back together again at some point in the future. Right, 9 16th spanner. That sort of goes on there, it'll do the trick. There we go. Get that wound off. Fantastic. Now, can we get that off as well while we're on? Save us putting it in the vice later on. No, I can't do that because it just moves the carriage. Okay, next job are these two Allen head bolts again that are holding on this casting that's got the thread in there. Five thirty tooths Allen key. Oh, and it fits super right. Make sure it's all the way in. Everything on this lathe is not particularly tight, in all honesty. We've not found anything yet from memory, although it has been quite a while since I did the last video. Apologies. Uh, I haven't found anything, anything that's really tight to be honest. Do it to camera, Mr. Young, to camera. Right, so that's that one. Stick it on the blue sheet. I wonder how many owners this lathe has had over the years. It's had a, it's had a bit of neglect, I must admit. It's definitely due some, lo uh, some love, that's for sure. Right, so can we now remove that we can there we go look so we'll screw that out and then we'll do the same thing we'll go over to the uh, aluminium jaw device and we'll separate the little wheel and stuff off the threaded rod we can have a little look at the condition of this rod as well because this this one gets quite a lot of use a lot more use than the other one so it might be a bit worn i don't know it's very old There we go, right. Okay. To the aluminium jawed vice. Shum! Hokely dokely. Right, we'll stick that back in there again. Gingerly, as Eric would say. Okay, are we on camera? Oh, we are on camera. Excellent. Now we should be able to get this undone now. See what kind of condition these threads are in. Feels pretty good. Super job. Right, that's that wheel off and out of the way. Stick him over there. Now we should have another washer. Oh, this time we've got a small washer on the outside. We had a large washer on the outside last time. So it may not be a standard washer, that one. Nothing else is going to fly off. There we go. 
Okay. Oh, hang on. He's dropped a washer. Jeez. Okay. Right, obviously one washer on either side. They are different. I'll have to check the diagram or fact the video. I think it was that one was on the outside. I'm sure it was. That was on there for reference, Andy. And then the larger one, which doesn't look like it's steel, it's something else that went on the inside. Okay, let's take a look at these threads. Eee, there's stuff everywhere. Right. <laughs> With a brake cleaner. Can't go wrong, can you? Right, last time I used brake cleaner, I didn't ruin my eye. Not a good idea. Okay, here we go. Okay, made enough of a mess there. Right, let's take a closer look. Now, hopefully this is gonna stay in focus for you. What we're looking for is, if we look at the extremities of the threads, i.e. all the way to one end, you can see a flat going across the thread here. And the narrower, or the more narrow that flat is, the more the threads have worn. And of course, this tends to do most of its work only on a small number of the threads. So, if we look down here, these actually are significantly smaller. So if we get some verniers, we should be able to get some idea of a measurement, approximately, uh, and then we can, you know, decide whether or not we need to replace this. But just looking at it, it looks most worn in this area here. Yeah, around that area there, look, they're actually quite thin, the threads on there. The peaks are almost completely gone. There's a slither of flatness on there and you compare that right at the end you can see it in one shot there just how much thinner these are to these and what that's going to do is it's going to cause slop in the actual drive um, which you know we don't want the carriage wants to maintain position and be accurate for machining purposes so i may need to order a new one of these if it's available who knows i don't know yet but we'll have to look on the uh, on their on their website and see if they're listing it I have been able to get some parts from them that aren't listed, but believe me, not many. There's long waiting lists for some bits and pieces. Yeah, it's not so good. Right, verniers. Let's go and find those. Okay, zeroed. There we go, look. Uh, yes, I know it needs a new battery. It always seems, it seems to eat batteries, this thing. Okay, so we take a measurement, and this is, uh, you know, this is only approximate because the, t the teeth are tapered, obviously. But... You know, if we go on there like that, so my eyesight's terrible, so you've got to tell me what I'm about. Oh, there we go. I can just to say grab the top of that tooth, just over a mil. Yeah, look, 1.02. So we'll call it a mil. Oh, yeah, one millimeter. Now, where's the most worn area? I would say that one of these few, just here, look. Let's go in there. On camera, let's do it again. Yeah, so it's lost 20% of its thickness, so 0.8 of a mil. So there's definitely a difference between these teeth here and the ones at the end. They're definitely worn. It actually looks a lot more than that. That may just be because I can't really measure it very well, but oh, there you go, look, 0.69 on that one. So yeah, this is pretty worn out, but let's face it, you know, it's done what? Nearly 70 years work. Wow. So, if all goes to plan, we should now be able to remove this deck, call it a deck, this deck from the carriage. I don't know. Oh yes, now, we've got some more adjustment screws down here for that play, so there's going to be a, uh, an insert in there which is going to fall out if I'm not careful, so I'll put my finger under there and try and catch that. There we go, right, let's take a look at this. better different angle now before we start it's got these little inserts here for that twizzly bit we took off at the start so i should be able to slide those out hopefully it's not too much grime there we go there's one and let's go the other way with that one jeez there we go so we'll stick that those two bits over here with that twizzly bit the rotating part, Mr. Young, the rotating part. Okay, so again, we can see inside here, 
all those little adjustment screws which all push against the adjustment plate and that its job the only reason why it exists is to eliminate play because obviously every time this goes up and down even though it's got some oil on it it will wear a tiny tiny bit so you've got to have a way of compensating for that hence the dovetail taper so as this plate is pushed across by those screws it takes up any kind of wear that's the idea it seems to work pretty well it's worked well for years and years and years there's no reason why it won't keep working well for many years to go so we now have a load more of these adjustment screws to remove and they're all there that's great news right we're going in with my imperial adjustable spanner that's that one loose that one loose that one loose Ooh, that one loose that's good that one loose and oh perfect that one loose too right flat screwdriver required let's try this one threads feel good super job way easy tiger two like watching paint dry isn't it there might be some editing going on it depends how bothered i am right there we go two more fantastic there's a lot of individual parts on these little legs isn't there okay that's that bit done now that is all stripped and ready for cleanup Super. Stick it on there. Doom. Okay. Now, I want to give this a bit of a clean first. It's absolutely blathered. As you can see, working on machinery, it's just millions of years of, well, not decades of grime. There you go. Okay. That looks like it's serviceable. Happy with that. So we'll stick that on there as well. Brilliant. Now, we need to remember to remove that thread insert as well, don't we? These two flat screws again, so there's one. Pretty loose again. Honestly, when this whole thing goes back together, it's all gonna, everything's going to get cleaned up and thread locked. That's one. Strategically placed on the bench, as always. Two. Excellent. I, was, I really thought I'd find more sort of botched and stripped threads on this thing, but it's actually not in bad nick. Is that going to come out? It is. Lovely jubbly. Right, onto the bench. A place for everything and everything in its place. Wow, it's getting less and less, isn't it? So, next job is to remove this top plate by the looks of it. Not entirely sure, never done this before. Let's take another look at the diagram. Okay, I haven't really studied this off camera, so you're sort of on the journey with me. Uh, we've got bolt 57, a vertical bolt over there. That looks like it does something. 35 is a pretty hefty one. Somehow that plate has to lift off upwards. So anything that's underneath it that goes under the bed needs to be removed. So we've got some more bolts here, like 66 is holding this this plate on here and we've got that plate at the back as well hmm okay well I think we'll just make our way work our way around looking for any kind of bolts that are vertical that will be holding those bits in place and then we'll see what happens this stuff at the end by the way is just like a dust guard stop all the well a swarf guard it stops all the swarf getting stuck underneath the carriage between the carriage and the actual lathe bed Jeez, look at all the swarf from over the years. Look, that could be swarf from the 1970s. Who knows? Looks too shiny for that, doesn't it? Somebody must have cleaned it since then, given it a service. At least some love. I don't know. Anyway, right, so we've got one, two, three Allen or you know, cap head bolts, we call those. One, two, three of those, and it's the right size, whatever size that is. I always forget. <laughs> Three sixteenths. I don't know. Is it three six? I don't know. Yeah, three sixteenths. Okay, so let's get those cracked off. Ooh, that one's quite tight. I 
do like old machinery. It's very cool. A lot better built than modern stuff that you get. Out of various countries, not going to elaborate too much. Everything's built to a price these days. Whereas back then, it's the engineers used to used to make things as good as they could, didn't they? Whereas nowadays, it's all it's all about the price. And if you do want quality, you end up paying a hell of a lot more for it because it becomes exclusive. Okay, geez, where's my pick? Hang on. Need to remove the crud, whatever it is. There we go. Let's give that a go. Is it going to fit? It is going to fit. Super. Right, we'll have that one out. Jeez. Okay. That's that one done. Okay, that's three bolts out of there. Now we've got two more at the back here. So let's just slide you down a bit. How's this for photography? Right, I'm using a DTI magnetic base for the camera. It's brilliant. If you've never tried it before, if you make videos, very, very good. Now, something's happening down here. I'm going to move the camera. Hang on. The apron, this bit at the front, is starting to drop away from the carriage. It shouldn't go too far because it is linked into these threads on here. So I can't see it dropping down to the bench, but I could be wrong. Oh my word. Right, that's that bit out of the way. Super. Can we get the bolt out? We can. And note, this one is shorter than the ones at the front. So we'll put those separate on the, uh, on the mat. Right, another one. Here we go. What's happened? I can't see anything from where I am. It's doing something. Cool, okay, we'll get that one out of the way. There we go. Right, so that's the largest of the bolts. No idea what size it is. I would have gone a 13 mil, which is probably half inch, isn't it? Half inch, there's a half inch spanner. Right, so let's give this a go. Oh yes. Oh my word, that was finger tight. And now it's gone tight. It's one of those really annoying bolts. Go on, you can do it. It's amazing actually how this whole lathe stayed together because there were so many bolts that have, have been loose. All right, we'll stick him over there. So, can we move things off the lathe? Probably not yet. No, it feels still really solid. There is a bar that runs on the underside here with a lot of bolts. I think that's got to come off next. Now, forgive the weird camera angle, it's just easier like this than it is trying tipping the whole thing on its side. So, we've got the threads that, where's it gone? This, these are the, the threads, or the nuts, I suppose you'd call it, that this, this particular bolt went into the largest bolt. That's that one, but we've still got three more bolts in the vertical orientation that go in from underneath. So we're going to whip those off, and then hopefully this plate here will come out of the way. Should do. Now, spanner size. Anybody's guess. It's not metric. Oh, look at that. I'm getting AF proficient. Not really. Jeez. We'll do the ring spanner. Oh, that one's <laughs> that one's loose. Fantastic. There's a lot of bits on this one. I'll right, we'll stick him over there. Well, that looks promising. I like that. Things are coming loose nicely. Lovely jubbly. Right, let's get that one out of the way. There's that. Oh, a shim! Look! Can you see that? There's a shim in there. One shim there, one shim there, no shim there. Bizarre. I'll stick him over there. Okay, so this now should lift off. Oh, hang on, hang on. There is a shim. A little tiny bit of a shim. All right, we'll stick him back on there. Not a full shim, part of a shim. So does that now lift off? I don't know. Maybe. No. Oh. It's still very, very much stuck in position. Hmm. 
Okay, let's take a look from the other side. Well, the apron is completely separated. And looking at this, there's another one of those underplates just here, which hasn't got any shims on it. It has, it's got one shim here and oh, one at the end as well, one at each end. Only held on with two bolts this time. Interesting. Right, we'll stick him on the bit of blue roll as well to document. It's like archaeology, is this? Okay, so what's holding this in place? Sure enough, it slides up and down, and I could probably take it off the end. But why doesn't it lift off? It seems very, very much still held in position. Maybe we have to slide it off. It might work, who knows? Oh, it's getting really tight. I remember now, we did this on a previous video and the bed is slightly more worn here than it is here. So all the adjustments are a little bit too tight for when you get down this end of the actual, uh, the actual bed. Hmm. Let's keep going, let's keep going. Let's see if we can force it down. Jeez, that's tight. That's really tight. Okay, that's not gonna work. Ah, right, we can, we've can. we got the adjuster here, look. These are all the adjustment bolts. If we slacken those off, we should be good to go. Excellent, where's my super special wrench again? In fact, it might be a spanner, isn't it? It is, oh, look at that. Jeez, swarf everywhere. Right, that's two. Jeez. Three, four. Right, all the lock nuts are loose. Let's see if we can get these undone now. I can't even see the slots from where I am. Okay, that's one. Only got to back them off a little bit. Two. Where is he? There he is. Three. Four. Now, in theory, that should now slide off with ease. Oh, look at that. Jeez. Okay, very carefully on the bed. That is the adjustment sleeves kind of thing. That, that little little piece that pushes against the side of the bed to take up the place. So we'll check that out as well. Okay, over to the mat. Holy moly, there's a lot of little bits on these things. We've got a, uh, it's not a grease nipple. It's an oil, an oiling nipple, by the way. Don't put grease in there, whatever you do. One there, one there. We've got that little shroud at the front that usually holds a felt to stop all the swarf going in. I'll turn it over now for the first time in many, many, many years. And you can see here all the score marks in the casting. Uh, okay, looks it actually looks it looks all right, but I mean it looks to be deceiving. So we need to we need to whiz out all of these adjustment screws or bolts. They're very long actually. So we'll whiz those out, because all that needs to be cleaned and decided. Oh my word, look at that, you see? Big long protrusion with no threads, a little, like a little push rod on the end of that bolt. So very, very specific to the lathe. I mean, sure, you could make them up if you, <laughs> if you had a lathe. You could make some. But, you know, if you haven't, because you're busy fixing your lathe, you'd have to buy some. If you can still buy them. I don't know. You have to ask Mr. Myford. He holds all the cards. You can get Myford parts, Myford lathe parts on eBay and stuff as well though. I have been looking at it. There's a couple of more bits that I still need that they haven't got, so. Right, next job, I think, is we should get this felt cover taken off. Right, let's get rid of those. Stick those over there for now. Jeez. Right, now, flat screwdriver, and it's had some serious munching as this piece. If you can see in there, look, there is a screw here. There's not much left of it, though. Hopefully, we can get it out. Where's my wire brush? Let's get some of the crud out of the way. Oh, look at that. That one's gone completely, and that one's, well, buggered, isn't it? Hmm, not the easy thing to film, so we'll stick it on a block of wood. That will move the mat back a bit. Stick it on a block of wood, and then maybe... In fact, will it go under there? It will, look at that, perfect. Now, you can see a lot better. Okay, 
We're going in. I'm very dubious about that one though. I'm about to be filed off or something. Oh, mole grips. Ah! Did I say mole grips? Okay, that's one. That's how they should come out. Okay. Great to give this piece of machinery a new lease of life. It was in a horrendous state when I picked it up. It really was. And it has been mutilated. It has had the, the, the lathe bed ground to get something bigger in the chuck than it's supposed to take. Right, here we go. What do you reckon? Do you reckon it's going to work? Jeez. I don't think it's going to work, people. No. All right, I have a plan. Bear with me. Now, many, many moons ago, I was given this by Jared at Forge, and I said, I will give it a go. And I haven't. I've never used it. This S415 promises to grab onto and allow a screwdriver to bite into a munched up screw head and therefore allow you to turn the screw to extract it. Now the screw in the picture is a posi or a star screw or whatever, call it what you like, it's not a flat head like this and looking at this half of the flat head is almost missing as well so it's a pretty tall order to ask it to remove this. I don't know if it will work or not, if it doesn't we'll try something else but it's worth a try because we've got some and I've not used it before so I'm going to have to, because uh, it's obviously a virgin bottle, we're going to have to give it a little nick and put some on. Before we do that, we need to make sure that that surface is nice and clean and free from grease to make sure that this this stuff, this magical paste, can key into that, uh, that screw head. So, cover your eyes. There we go. That was simple. Hopefully it didn't go on the lens of the camera like it normally does, and believe me, the camera does not like Great cleaner. Right, that looks pretty clean to me. Right, little cap off. Where's me, me knife? There we go. Right, we'll give it a little chomp on the end. I don't want to go mad. There we go. Super, now it should come out. Is it going to come out? Yes, it is. Brilliant. Okay, right, back to the workpiece. I was just reading the bottle, and it says in here in English, this is quite good actually, I'm not sure if you can read it on there or not, because it's tiny writing in my eyesight, it's terrible. It says, optimum power transmission for loosening damaged screws for professional use only. Well, I don't know about that. <laughs> we'll give it a go. Okay. We'll stick a little bit on there. I think you put it on the screw head. I'm not sure. I didn't see any more. In no, well, geez, that's a lot. Okay, that's definitely enough. Okay, screwdriver. Clean the tip. Make sure we've got maximum possibility of getting this, uh, this out. Okay. Oh, you can hear that grindy, pasty kind of stuff going on. Is it moving? I don't know. I can't actually see what I'm doing. Maybe not. There we are. Maybe I had too much on. Oh, you can imagine the screwdriver slipping and just stabbing through my thumb. It probably will happen, so I'm going to move my hand. Wow. I don't know that a lot of hope for this one. I wonder if... That screw's definitely gone. That screw's definitely gone. I wonder if we can just turn the bracket and it's going to move the screw for us, just to loosen it a little bit. I don't know. So maybe if I turn it at the same time. A bit of wood's in the way, hang on. Move the wood. Can you still see? You can, you can still see. How good is that? Right, here we go. We might be winning. Right, I'm going to stick it in the vise. Come to the vise with me. We need more purchase. We 
really, 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 really do. There. Is that going to work? That should work all right, I think. Not too hard in the vice. Right, here we go. I can do more things now because I've got a spare hand. I'm pushing down really hard. I'm not going to stab my thumb anymore. Oh, yes. Look at that. Look at that. It is moving. I'll give you a close up. Right, I think we've got you in focus. It's quite a difficult shot. I'm just going to clean some of that stuff off now because we've sort of done the job with that. Did it help? I think it might have helped a little bit. And every, so you can see it is actually moving now. You can see the screw head is turning, but it probably is bent. That's probably the issue. So, can I get some mole grips on it? I don't know, it's pretty small. We'll try with the with the ten tools mole grips. They've got little tiny bitey bits on the end. They're really good for this kind of stuff. Can't guarantee it there. Maybe if we go across that way, actually. So we'll turn it that way for the camera. There you go. Just tighten it back up again, Andy. Why don't you? Jeez. No, it might be too small even for these. Mm. Come on, you can come out of there. You can, you can do it. Can I keep rotating it? Maybe. Just got to get the felt. Yeah, there you go, look. You see, just use the, use the bracket to help. And then once it's out of the threads, then maybe we can just extract it somehow. But we're going to need a new one of them. Well, actually, three. Well, I think we'll just replace all of them, actually. Because some are missing. But the threads are all good. That's the important thing. A few little fasteners is nothing, is it? Oh, yes. Look at that. Bloody good. Yeah, there's not a lot left of that, uh, that bolt head, is there? That little screw head. It's just, you know, it's knackered, isn't it? Let's face it, it's gone. There really isn't much else left on this piece. Uh, looks like we've got a couple of those oil nipples to remove. Uh, and that really is it. So, I haven't got a spanner small enough for these, so I'm going to have to use some kind of a socket. So let's see what came in that kit that's going to work. Oh, there's three. We've got one here, one here, and one at the back. So, what size are they? Let's try a quarter. I don't know. Oh, Bloody professional. Right, we'll stick on the little thingy jig. See if we can oh yes, yeah, see if we can get those out. And I might fit new ones, I don't know yet, we'll see. Excellent. That's what it's nice to it'd be nice to try and keep it as original as possible, but you know, there's quite a few bits and pieces that have got munched on this. That's two. Excellent. One more to go. Right. Not too bad. Not too bad at all. Super. Salvaged all three of those. Okay. This can now go on the pile of bits. Something like. Oh, oh, oh. Like that. We've hidden the oil nipples. I wonder if YouTube's going to bar me for saying the word nipple. Because it is a nipple, isn't it? It's an oiling nipple. Right. Perfect. Jeez, what's next? <laughs> it's really oily on here. I actually, I did spray it with some like spray greasy stuff. For a while it was sort of parked up in the workshop, collecting dust. I didn't have time to do the video just to stop it from rusting. Because I did notice a few little spots of rust developing. So, hence it's a bit... Bit magnified. Where's my spray? Hang on. Hang on. It's like a live stream when I say that, isn't it? Right, here we go. Fantastic. It could be a bit cleaner to work on, that's for sure. Okay, enough of watching Andy clean the lathe. Now, we've got the apron here at the front, which is just sort of hanging in there. It's just sort of locked into the threads, this threaded bar here, which is used for, uh, you know, for auto feed for the actual, uh, the deck, uh, the carrier, sorry, the carrier. So, 
it's held in by looks. I can see down here, like um, another uh, another dovetail joint type setup, which is quite loose. So there must be an easy way of. Oh, I see that engages the drive. Okay, and if we got rid of that bit, the whole thing would just fall off. So we've got a couple of little lock nuts and small sort of grub screw bits on the side here. If we undo those, this whole piece should now come off. Upon closer inspection, which is always a good thing, we've got some weird stuff going on here. We've got this uh, lock nut, which is sort of, there's a cutout on this tube, and it's a bit dodgy, to be honest. So, I don't know. Maybe we can just give it a wiggle and it'll come off. I don't know. Don't damage it. Oh, there we go. Look, perfect. Oh, brilliant. Look, that's how. That's how the carriage is disengaged and engaged to that screw thread. Basically, it just releases its grip on the actual rotating uh, bar. Basically, this bar here just rotates around like that. And then when this is engaged, it just moves either down or up, depending on the rotational direction. Very, very simple. Okay, well, the good news is the apron is off. The bad news is we have to strip it. But that's going to have to wait until the next video, because this one is already too long. Oh, it's getting warm in this workshop. Summer's on its way. Well, I've been doing this now for... I don't know, a couple of hours, two hours probably, with the work, filming, stopping, starting, messing around. Uh, so that's probably going to edit down to about 45 minutes of video, maybe an hour, who knows, that's probably too long. Um, so realistically, I think it's probably best that we stop the video now, and we'll do uh, Mr. Apron in the next video, which I will be filming hopefully this afternoon or this evening. Uh, and in that video, we'll be doing this in a full strip down inspection because it's already off the lathe now. And we've got the end stock to do that normally sits here on the lathe bed. And finally, we've got uh, this screw thread and the end bushings to remove as well. And then it's done. It's completely stripped. Um, I think there might be one more bit to do. I couldn't get the, the one of the bar. I think it was like an idler shaft where the pulleys go. Let's have a look. Pretty sure that still needs to be needs to be got out. But it's aluminium. It's a it's a casting. I don't want to break it, so I sort of put it in a drawer. Forgot all about it. Problem for another day. Well, that day has now come back. So maybe on the next video we'll see. Okay, crew. Well, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Actually, that's too soon. Let's take a look at all the bits that we took off this lathe. Look at all these bits. So it's, I like to film this a little bit for the archive because sometimes it's really helpful when you're putting things back together. You can see exactly the relationship of all the various parts. There you go, look. How's that? It tries to be as neat as possible. When I, when I was teaching at Unitech, I used to get my students to do exactly the same thing, but then write on the blue roll, or a bit of cardboard, whatever they used, what each component was called with an arrow, and then take some photos for me. They loved doing that kind of stuff, and it used to really help them remember as well. I have no idea what half this stuff's called officially, but um, it's bits of a lathe, and now it's not, well, they're not on the lathe anymore. Job done. <sighs> well, that really is it now. We've done everything. Don't forget the website for the Myford Bits and Pieces, which is myford.co.uk. Very helpful people, must admit. Although they're not a sponsor of the channel, if they want to send me some free stuff, that's fine. I'll accept it, of course, but uh, they're not a sponsor, unfortunately. Um, okay, crew, well, if you enjoyed the video, why not subscribe to the channel? Give me a thumbs up as well, because YouTube like that kind of stuff. You'll also find me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Hardly ever go on Twitter, to be fair, but Instagram, definitely. And um, what else? Oh, yes, if you want to support the channel, you can do that through Patreon. I've got quite a few patrons now. And you could also send uh, a donation direct through PayPal. All the information's down there in the description of the video. Okay, crew, I've got to have a beer, I think, because it's getting quite warm. Have a beer and then do have a bit of a tidy up and then do the next video. See you next time. Cheers. Over and out.
이게 뿅뿅이야. 아, 예. 